Okay, everybody, welcome back. I definitely overshot my anticipated hiatus date there by a good couple of weeks, but I was definitely enjoying the time off and the time out of the uh, content creation grind, but it's time to give the people some information. So welcome back for everybody uh, who had been tuning in regularly before we've got a lot to catch up on and I'm going to give you a bit of a brief overview of what's transpired over the last two to three months that I haven't been doing regular uh, weekly or bi-weekly updates and then sort of leave you up to where we are right now and a little bit of the forecast for uh, you know the coming weeks here in terms of how I plan to cover this stuff and what the content um, plan is going to look like going forward. And then uh, one other uh, exciting announcement in terms of some stuff that's come up over my time off and having the bit of time to uh, think about uh, what the next year is going to bring here. So um, let's get into it. So I'm going to read you the bullet point summary that I have got uh, written for a blog post. That's the first thing I should mention is this is going to be going on my website. It's just mitchcleary.com and it is going to be put as a blog post. I'm trying to start writing these uh, the scripts out uh, in a written format so that they can go up there as a blog for anybody who prefers to read. I know everybody's got a different preferred style of, of information consumption myself personally it's more audio format uh, but for people who do like to skim that's going to be an option as well so if you want I'm going to put the link to this blog post in the show notes of the podcast and down in the description of the YouTube video so um, here it is sort of the article or the uh, episode at a glance so average sales prices continue to trend downward this has been true ever since the peak in March and it's carried on right through the entire summer. We have not seen a single consecutive month where we haven't had month over month losses right up until August statistics. Some months much more drastic than others, but the trend has definitely been downward, continuing downward. Um, August saw the first decrease in overall inventory month over month. Um, of the year. So we saw inventory rising right from January, even up into the peak in March, it was still the highest inventory of the year, but then it has continued to rise all year long, right up until uh, August, that was the first downtick that we saw in the total number of active listings that's between july and august we saw that drop um and at the same time in the city of peterborough it's not the county because the data is a little bit different at the same time we saw sales number of sales finally tick up between july and august because that number as well had basically slugged it downwards ever since march we just saw sales continuing to go down 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 every month and between july and august slight uptick so August was the first glimmer of hope in something that might appear, uh, the lines on the graph converging towards what could create a price bottom. Um, And that's the total number of active listings dropping slightly and the sales increasing slightly, uh, giving us a months of inventory metric that was slightly lower than the month before. And all of that is unique for the year on year because all the months prior um, were were really just a lot of uh, carnage in terms of uh, prices continuing to fall and no end in sight uh, for any of the other metrics supporting it. Uh, next point is that buyer confidence remains low, even though housing scarcity is still apparent in rising rents. Um, we had a record six month period uh, in terms of immigration so far. As far as I'm aware, it's approximately 250,000 uh, new residents that we've welcomed. And this is a, a you know staggering number uh, that, that used to be a yearly number. Um, and, and it wasn't long ago that we just first surpassed the notion of having over 300,000, uh, new immigrants in one year. And this year they're on pace for 
their target, which is, I believe, around 450,000. So it's a massive number, um, and our, our uh, housing supply is is not reflexive enough to, to uh, or elastic enough to, to, you know, rebound in kind in that short time period to, to, to provide new housing uh, for, for all of that population growth. Um, so we are definitely seeing pressure on that side, but we know that the, the purchase market slow, we're, we're seeing this manifest in the rents. The rents are rising sharply, uh, throughout Ontario, seeing, uh, realtor friends and colleagues and, and, you know, sort of people that I follow all around the GTA posting about what's going on with rental rates. We see it here. We've done leases for clients and the rents are sharply on the rise and it, it appears to be a multi-varied thing uh, uh in terms of what's happening there but in short it seems that everybody who's postponing buying because the market is is in a state of decline and they don't want to buy uh, a depreciating asset is is still having to find some form of shelter and so they're they're taking the short-term option and sharp increase in rents um the reason this is so notable is because in times when you have a, a population uh, decrease like you would have seen in the Alberta um, decline, uh, in, in, in the oil price declining years, uh, you can think of 2014 through 2015, um, and really there's just a general exodus uh, of, of uh, the job market there and, and residents moving back to the East Coast, back to the West Coast. And what happened is you saw... Um, purchase prices of real estate drop, sales prices drop, but you also saw rental rates drop sharply as well. Um, so to see the purchase prices drop, but to see the rent so strong is an indicator that at some point uh, we need to see that shift back into the purchasing market. Um, the the buyer confidence remains low because the Bank of Canada's next moves are uncertain. There's a lot of mixed signaling going on um, between the Bank of Canada uh, who's setting our uh, interest rate um, and, and is, is is dictating what rate banks are lending their loans out at. I shouldn't say dictating, but their their prime rate is influencing these mortgage rates, as everybody is well aware. Uh, the relation between the Bank of Canada rising the rate and how these mortgage rates have gone up. Um, this is also a relationship that that is uh, involves what the Federal Reserve, the United States Central Bank does, uh, because for the most part, our central bank acts uh, more or less in lockstep with what they do, not down to a T, but they follow generally. Uh, they try and keep the, the currency sort of tied together, and they never get too far out of kilter on their, their moves on these interest rate uh, policies. So, But they're, they're having uh, very different signaling uh uh, about what is the next move we're seeing signaling from the bond market where you know sort of the smart future forward looking money um people who are who are holding uh midterm debt uh are are forecasting that there's going to be rate decreases by the start of 2023 although there's no talk of that formally from the banks we know that we seem to be heading towards uh, recessionary territory. I personally uh, can can attest to this. I can feel it and see it in everything that's going on. Every business owner I talk to, every homeowner I talk to, people sweating the bills, people having trouble paying for groceries, um, worried about the the you know their employer going forward. A lot of uncertainty. A lot of lot of uh, I would say chance of recession coming up. Um, so I would say that there is a multivaried equation. That, that leads up to what is our buyer demand in Peterborough, um, more of which I'll I, I discuss in, in depth a little bit more in the article. But basically, uh, gas prices have affected uh, people's willingness to take a long commute. Uh, work from home status, a lot of it has been retracted. Um, and so there's a number of things pointing towards uh, GTA exodus buyers from the pandemic reverting back to the city. And we continue to see this trend uh play out at the same time we do see baby boomers looking to come and retire here albeit they uh, as much as they have healthy budgets uh compared to anybody else looking to buy in our area nobody wants to buy something right now that's can potentially be worth 10 percent less in six months so they are patient just the same um and 
we're yet to see a bottom in the market. Uh, opinions vary greatly on what's going to happen next. And I think that's the key takeaway. I talk to a lot of people about this. I follow a lot of uh, content creators on this stuff, which are all, you know, informants in, in, the, uh, in the space. Uh, realtors, mortgage brokers, sort of the authority sources. Um, and and you, you, of course, you get economists, you get business people, you get fund managers, and you get columnists in, in the major newspapers. And it seems like everybody's opinion uh, is varied right now about when a bottom is going to come about, uh, how much further things could drop, how long it could take, what the bank's next moves are, um, what's going to play out in terms of government policy about any matter of issues to do with lending and housing. Um, so I, I think that anybody who, who talks right now, like they've got uh, the, the real answer on what's going to play out or any specific timelines, bah, <laughs> like just nobody, nobody really knows. Uh, at times when, when uh, the pandemic was uh, past its darkest days and the low for long interest rate policy was in place, there was basically a generalized broad consensus that prices were going to continue to rise rapidly uh, for, for a good amount of time. And you could hardly challenge that thesis um, because every piece of data was out there to support that opinion. Um, and I would say right now, there's just such a mixed bag of factors um, and, and opinions about what's going to happen that it, it is one of the most difficult times, I would say, to navigate exactly what's going to happen next and how close we may or may not be to a bottom. So um, I'm going to leave it at there for this week. Uh, I'm going to try and keep these videos a little bit shorter for everybody so I don't veer, veer too uh, close to the to the 20 minute or even the half an hour mark on just the update portions and I'm going to try and keep the interviews a little tighter going forward too going to do a few of them probably not going to do exactly as many as before uh, if you got any thoughts or feedback on this stuff let me know if you guys had enjoyed the prior interviews I've done some of them with the mayoral candidates and, and some other local uh, sort of housing um, advocates uh, and I would hope that going forward those interviews are only going to be about half an hour. Uh, I've been listening to a, a great podcast called uh, Big Money Energy by Ryan Sarant. And that's a good one to check out for anybody who just likes anything inspirational and, and business-based. And uh, his are half an hour and they're packed full of ads. Um, but I thought, man, if this guy can do put this much value into half an hour, there's no reason that I need to be shooting a 45-minute, one-hour-long podcast. So we'll give that a try and see how it goes. I'm open to everybody's opinions. Um, other than that, there's, there's definitely gonna be a bit of a shift going forward in the content schedule. I don't think I'm going to be doing weekly updates, uh, in the new year going forward, going to be focusing on some other things because it is very time intensive to create this stuff and put this stuff out. Um, and on that note, I'm going to dive into it a little bit deeper in a further show. Uh, but I have really been working over the last month or so on uh, kind of crystallizing the idea for a business and business model surrounding uh, secondary suite generation, um, including everything from consultation on to uh, design and construction. I think it's a very important part of the housing solution going forward. And it's something that I want to uh, sort of build out um, some services around and start to build some content around and you're probably going to start to see more of that stuff coming out in the near future in regards to um, uh, basically a second business in conjunction to the Kamar Cleary real estate team here and uh, hopefully it'll be a good complimentary service and and uh, do our part in helping to increase the housing supply here uh, because as a lot of people are well aware even though the prices have come down drastically uh, over the last several months the affordability uh, still has not increased in terms of uh, what it costs to own the same property uh, as it did in the peak. Um, on a final note there for anybody who's stuck with me 
Um, I, I do want to say, just to dive back into some some hard statistics, that prices right now, in terms of the average sales price, there's one note I did miss, um, they're down a little over 20% from the peak in the city of Peterborough. So drastic numbers, um, you know, if you were to take, uh, you know, a, a million dollar home in March, it's now an $800,000 home or less. And if you're to take a $600,000 home in March, uh, it's it's 480 or less right now. So some real drastic numbers. It's something to bear in mind if you're out there shopping around or you're looking on Realtor.ca and you think, oh wow, that's um, you know this this beautiful property. It's only 750, for example. I I think that could be worth it for me. Bear in mind that your house is also worth much less than potentially the last time you got an appraisal. Um, so if you're out there shopping around with anybody it's uh or or your sort of window shop in realtor.ca worth getting another price opinion on your own property if you don't already have a strong idea of what it is uh so that you don't get yourself set up for too much of a of a letdown um you know when you realize that you might not actually be able to afford that that uh you know, what was a million dollar house, it's now 800,000, uh, even though it's dropped that much because the property that you have to sell has, has dropped in kind. Um, lots of other anecdotes and insights uh, on that stuff that we are trying to chime in on our check segments that we're putting out. So we're on checks there. We're releasing that stuff on the Kamar Cleary uh, Instagram page, some little snippets and shorts there. And I'm going to put some more stuff out like that separately in the way of, of shorts on my social media pages as time goes on. Um, in, in, rather than putting it all in here, just in order to keep these updates a little briefer. So that's it. I hope everybody is doing well. I'll look forward to engaging with whoever is still out there watching or listening once this gets put out. And uh, thanks so much uh, for everybody who's been tuning in and has expressed uh, while I was on my hiatus that they were missing the updates. I, I really, truly love interacting with everybody. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again soon.